Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. You know, you too can misunderstand a gyro compass. All you gotta do is listen to the plain truth. Warning. Moderate to severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range. And Gladys? <coughs> Let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. The Plain Truth Channel specializes in making videos. They've got lots of videos there. And they're pretty much all unusable because they're shot under the worst possible atmospheric conditions you can imagine. Usually low and across water. And even when Travis manages to capture uh, obstruction by the Earth's curvature, he just simply denies it. Now there's got to be an explanation for why boats and entire cities and things like that disappear. So Travis has come up with his very own theory. Basically, he takes all the things that we already understand very well. Well, like refraction, miraging, like limitations to visibility. And he's lumped it all into one mysterious cause. The ether band. Oh, good lord. Well, that's a topic for maybe a whole series of videos. But today, I found Travis on his channel trying to figure out the magnetic north pole, gyroscopes, gyro compasses. And at the moment, he is hopelessly confused. So let's see if we can help him out. After experiencing seasickness on an Atlantic voyage in 1898, Sperry started to work on... He's talking about Sperry, the guy who was the original co-inventor of the ship. gyro compass. So the gyroscope is, is, is that right there. See that? The gyroscope is that. The rotor, the gimbal, and the frame, all of those things uh, are constructed to allow the rotor to maintain its uh, level uh, stability, right? Okay. His gyroscope, his gyroscope stabilized ship differed from others at the time by having a sensor built into the system to detect the first signs of a wave that the system would have to work to mitigate. In 1911, Sperry worked with the U.S. Navy to incorporate his gyroscopic stabilizer. Okay, gyroscopic stabilizer, that's the, uh, the modification from just a gyroscope. But it's not, so the gyroscope stabilizes itself. He's trying to construct a gyroscope that will help a, a naval or maritime ship stabilize in rough weather. Okay? Right? Following on that? Following on that? And... Sperry found another use for his gyroscopes in 1908. Magnetic compasses on steel battleships at the time had issues with maintaining magnetic or north with the variations of the magnetic field they experienced. Working with Hannibal Ford, Sperry began to work on gyro, on a gyro compass all right, here's a magnetic compass. Working with Hannibal Ford, Sperry began working on gyro compasses to replace the magnetic compass. All right, so what I, I think what I get here is, let's go back here. His gyroscope stabilized ship, his gyroscope stabilized ship differed from others at the time because they had a sensor built into the system to detect the first signs of a wave, right? So it, it uh, takes notice of the fact that the stability of the ship is going to change because of waves. And then the system would have to work to mitigate the effect of those waves on the ship, right? So basically what I'm interpreting here, because I don't see it said, I'm interpreting what is being said here. The gyroscopic stabilizer helps a ship not to basically, here, how about this? Basically, the gyro compass extends its ability to, re to remain rigid to the ship. Did you listen to anything you just read? The ship gyro stabilizer and the gyro compass have absolutely nothing to do with one another. 
So you've got a gyroscope meets compass. Gyroscope meets compass, you get gyro compass. A gyro compass is a type of non-magnetic compass which is based on a fast spinning disc or a gyroscope and the rotation of the earth. All right, now we're getting somewhere. So let's talk about the North Pole. All right, so you've got this basically, the geographic, no, that's not the geographic, is that? Okay, so is geographic North Pole, is that, is that what it means by true north? See, I don't even know. I think we're starting to see the problem. It's not calling it. See, you think that it is because you've got, it's the center, right? So if this is what true north is, this is the axis, the top of the axis. So if I'm spinning a marble. No, not the spinning marble analogy. Anything but that. True magnetic north, right, is in the northern. I mean, nobody's, I don't think anybody has ever been. Like, you can't go like, I walked, I hit it, and then when I walked back, the needle said, up, oh, turn around, and you just passed North Magnetic Pole. The, the magnetic pole is just, like I would say, just this wide swath of magnetic uh, energy, right? It, it, yeah, okay. So, this geographic North Pole, in my opinion, is a part of the... Uh, narrative the construct okay. this is not the north pole this is a hundred random people that showed up to take a look at the world's largest lawn dart you know since you obviously don't know the difference in magnetic north and geographic north let's just move on to the gyroscope and see what the problem really is okay so this is just another um another tab encyclopedia britannica big blue should be happy that i'm here I am, thanks. What about you, Gladys? <laughs> All right. A gyro compass, or a navigational instrument, which makes use of a continuously driven gyroscope. Right, so a gyroscope is the, uh, the focal point of this gyro compass. Not magnetic north, but a uh, setting something um, to a... Uh, rigid spin a reference a reference frame of, of rigidity rigidity in space gyro compass which makes use of a continuously driven gyroscope to accurately seek the direction of true geographic north okay so that goes back to here it didn't say it didn't say that geographic north is true north but I figured it out because I'm smart all right, so true north is geographic north, which is kind of, I don't know, geographic. This is geographical. It's just like in this area in particular. So in my world, geographic north pole is the magnetic north pole. It's the direction of the magnetic, the magnetic uh, energy. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. What we have here is a case of magneticus dyslexicus. Holy cow, Travis. The, the magnetic North Pole and the geographic North Pole are not the same. If I went here, based on the... If I'm looking at this stuff, I'm researching this, and I'm looking at this picture, whatever the fuck North Geomagnetic Pole... What, what is this? This is just... Uh, whatever. North Geographic Pole. North Geomagnetic Pole. North magnetic pole, what? Okay, I'm getting sidetracked. I don't even know if I should do this because it's so long. Um, it's it's like it's like going to this point, latitude and longitude. All right, these two lines don't really exist. This point, if I go here, that's where I am. Let's see now. If I go here, that's where I am. Hey, you know what? You're right. No matter where you go, there you are. As such, it is it is uh, immune. These properties make the gyro compass a prime navigational device in ships and submarines, as it has found extensive use on ore ships. Yada yada yada. Okay, so now it has gyro compasses, 
right? So you've got the you've got the the rotor right here. That's not the rotor knucklehead. That's part of the frame of the gyro. And the rotor is going to re is going to remain horizontal the entire time, right? <laughs> yeah. Can you see this? Okay, D does this not make sense to you that this is what's going on? Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh. Ha ah. Okay. Oh man. This is this is great. This is this is absolutely fantastic. You don't have a clue what you're looking at, do you? I am I'm thinking through this right now. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna say right now is based on this diagram, this horizontal stability that the gyro compass demonstrates, right? We've got a 45 degree angle. Okay, so here you are. You're at the you're at the North Pole and you're traveling around the world and you go halfway to the equator, which is 45 degrees. Got it, right? You're 45 degrees. Yep, you don't have a clue. In that top depiction, the blue part is the gyroscope wheel. You are looking at the side of the gyroscope wheel. The top of that wheel is turning towards us. The bottom of it is turning away from us. The ship is not at the North Pole. Read the caption. It's anchored at the equator. It's showing you what would happen to a normal gyroscope as the Earth rotates. That's what you're looking at. What is this? At the end of three hours... I think that I think that this is just telling you in what the concept is. I don't think that this I don't believe this it gets demonstrated. I don't believe this gets shown. Okay. And again, the only reason why I'm saying that is show me this in the little in a little diagram. You know, you can do a little pop-up window here. You can do a little pop-up window. Alright, so let's see if this helps. But again, this is just a, 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 uh, a diagram. The circular line shows the apparent motion of the axis of a gyroscope around the pole star in the absence of a pendulous mass. <laughs> Basically, I guess they're, what they're saying is because we can't reproduce the Earth, we are giving you a picture of what we think is the reality. The addition of the pendulous mass, the lower drawing, okay, that's the pendulous mass, okay, so, oh, well, okay. The addition of the pendulous mass converts the circular motion into an ellipse. The ellipse can then be damped out and the gyroscope becomes, what? Uh, uh, well, if you had looked down below the pictures you were staring at, you would have found a paragraph that completely explains what happens with a gyro compass. But let me try to give it to you in just a few words. The gyroscope itself is spinning uh, on its axis, which is almost parallel with the surface of the Earth. It's got a, a pendulous weight on the bottom of it that is trying to keep the spin axis horizontal. As the Earth rotates, however, unless that axis is lined up directly with the spin axis of the Earth, as the Earth rotates, the spin axis of the gyroscope will come off level, in other words, rise above the horizon. And at that point, the pendulous weight is putting a force on the spin axis of the gyroscope. The gyroscope reacts to that with what we call precession. It will process back to the point that the spin axis is horizontal again. Let me show you a video by Walter Lewin where he's demonstrating this. Now bear in mind what you're going to see is a bicycle wheel and he'll spin that up and he's going to hang it just from one side of the axle. So the entire weight of this thing is producing the force I'm talking about that causes the precession of the, of the uh, gyroscope. Let's have a look at it. Turning it over, and now I'm going to spin it up again.
And your momentum is now in this direction. See, it's turning the other way around. Angular momentum is in this direction. Torque is now towards me. Angular momentum is changing the torque. I've changed the direction of the spin angular momentum. I've not changed the direction of the torque, and now it is rotating, as seen from below, counterclockwise. Before it was rotating clockwise. If I can increase the torque by putting some weight here on the axle, here I have this, this actually extends in our case, and I can put some weight on here, then I actually add to the torque, and then you will see that it's, it goes faster, the precession frequency goes up. So I will put some weight on there. Oh. So let it first go around, which was roughly ten seconds, what we calculate it, and now I'm going to put two kilograms here at the end. And then you'll see an instantaneous increase in the precession frequency. You see it goes much faster now. I take it off, and then it goes back to its roughly ten seconds. So what I have done That's gyroscopic precession. That's what makes the gyro compass work. It's very easily explained, and all you have to do is read the article. I, I, don't, I don't read them telling us how, I only read them telling us that. This is what it does, okay? Show me. How? Well, it just does. No, that's, that's not good enough. Show me how it detects. This goes on for quite a while before the plain truth comes up with uh, this remarkable conclusion. Uh, this is what I'm saying right now. True north is not the detection of the rotation of the earth or gravity. True north is the turning of a gyroscope on its side and calling the vertical spin true north. And the ether band makes entire mountains disappear too, right? Yeah, I think we understand what the problem is. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Hey, Gladys. Uh -huh. We're out of here.